Now in organic chemistry, it's far more likely that you're going to see a structure drawn in three dimensions, as organic chemistry cares deeply about three-dimensional space occupation. In fact, it's one of the most important concepts that you'll see in all of organic chemistry. Organic compounds can be drawn in the two and three dimensions, but three-dimensional architecture is useful for understanding chirality, stereochemistry, and isomers, key concepts later on in this course and your university courses. There are multiple ways to represent molecules in three dimensions, the wedge dash formula, Newman projections, and Fisher projections. Let's start with the wedge dash. In the wedge dash formula, there are three kinds of lines. Straight lines, like that shown here in blue, are in the plane of the page. They're not the most informative, but are important for overall skeletature. Then there's two types of bonds that indicate three-dimensional space occupation. The wedge here, which is located out of the page, and the dash, which are behind the plane of the page. So the wedge shown here, like this, is out of the page, and the dash is behind the page. And what this does, is it allows us to use a two-dimensional medium, whether or not that's the computer screen that you're looking at right now or that I'm looking at right now, whether or not that's a piece of paper in your textbook or on a test or an assignment. It allows us to use this two-dimensional medium to communicate three-dimensional space by using the wedge out and the dash behind. Now let's take a look at the Newman projection and the Fisher projection. So Newman projections look down the axis of a bond. I always like to think of myself physically placing myself, staring down two atoms of a bond. Now this is typically a carbon-carbon bond in an alkane. And what we do is we place the substituents or the groups that are bound to those carbons around those atoms, which are connected to the axis in a position that allows us to understand their overlap. It's a lot of words to say we're staring down a bond or we're looking at how groups are interacting. Now, in a Newman projection, it's really common for you to see this eyeball here. Now this creepy eyeball is staring down this carbon-carbon bond. This carbon-carbon bond has a carbon in the front and a carbon in the back. So we're staring down this bond and we're taking a look at how their decorations interact with each other. Now we show this carbon in red here at the front at the junction of each of those groups. And the carbon with the green dot is back here behind everything. And so we have the green carbon in the back and the red carbon in the front. Now what I do is I work through each of the different groups. Group A, as I'm staring at the red carbon, is up. Group B here is out of the page. So if I'm staring down this bond, it's on my right, so it goes here. And group C is behind the page. So if I'm staring down this bond, it's on my left, so it's here. As I go to the back of this, I look at group F. This here is pointed down, and it's pointed down there. I then take a look at group D. Group D is out of the page, and therefore it's on my right-hand side. You'll notice it's over there with group B, which was also the wedge. And last but not least, I take a look at group E here that's behind the page, and it's on my right here, my left here as well. So we use the Newman projection to look at the orientation of these two different groups. Now I will draw your attention to the fact that here we have 60 degree angles between the groups in the front and the back. This will be important to us later on, but for now it's enough to be able to convert this line wedge dash formula into a Newman projection. Now a Fisher projection is the last type of three-dimensional architecture that you need to be comfortable with. They're a good way to see two adjacent chiral centers. On a Fisher projection, the horizontal arms are coming out of the plane and the vertical arms are going behind the plane. And the reason why I draw your attention to this is because in organic chemistry, you will see the Fisher projection drawn like so, with straight lines, 
without information. And it is a convention of the field that you understand that that means to you that the arms are coming forward and that the top and the bottom are going behind. So make sure you keep that in mind. Fissure projections will be really important as we move later on in the course, as we start to talk about biomolecules and carbohydrates in specific. So wedge dash formula, Newman projections, and Fisher projections, all fair game for understanding molecules in three-dimensional space. We will see and utilize all of these types of structures.